I like PewDiePie. <laughs> I don't watch him too often, but uh, I think he gets way too much heat for what it's worth. Yeah, like there are obviously fair criticisms of him. Over the past few years, I've kept up with him a lot. Every now and then, he'll put out like a really good, really thoughtful video that, um, that you know I I enjoy. Uh, I don't really follow his gaming stuff like like at all, uh, but I of course I'm all about the memes. I love just mindlessly just watching a video full of memes that are just great. Recently he put out a video about his drinking addiction and uh, I was like, oh, this is, going, this is going to be something that I can relate to and lo and behold, it was um, because I have a drinking addiction. There are a lot of good points that he made in the video that I want to share and basically bounce off of. Um, but honestly, like, just to start, just to, like, express what I'm dealing with. Um, it started with weed. <laughs> For the longest time, uh, I, I, I smoked, like, all the time. Um, sometimes it'd be daily. Back in, like, 2015, 2016. Sorry, someone's rat child is throwing a tantrum. Oh, the perks of having your own apartment. But um, it basically got too much, and at the time I was still living with my dad, and um, I kind of quit just to prove that I can do it. Uh, it was hard. I went through withdrawals because I was addicted to weed, and a lot of people say, "Oh, you can't get addicted to weed." Bull fucking shit. Can you go a week without any THC in your system at all? Give it a try, because I can speak from experience uh, by saying uh, it sucked. When you want to do something that you know isn't good for you, you sort of reason with yourself in your head. You know, it's like, uh, I can eat all this crap now, just work out later. <laughs> it's that kind of logic. And I, what, my, what my brain said to me was like, you know, Felix, pat yourself on the back. You quit drinking before. You've shown that you're in control, you know, obviously. Everyone drinks. This is not a problem for you. You can just uh, drink whiskey again. So I do. <laughs> but once I turned uh, 21 uh, in 2016, that kind of eventually started like my alcoholism. <laughs> I was able to buy it anytime I want. And, like, there's just so many different types of alcohol out there. You know, I wanted to try everything, like get my feel. You know, um, but at that time it was just hard liquor. It it, it was just straight alcohol. Uh, I did not like beer at all. Uh, couldn't tell you what an IPA was. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was really... It was the strong shit for, for a while. And eventually I got uh, accustomed to the taste of beer. And, uh, you know, back in maybe 2018, uh, like early on in 2018, uh, via beer pong, <laughs> believe it or not. But it was the, like the cheap, easy stuff like Michaela Ultra or Coors Light. And that kind of helped wean me off of, you know, like the, the hard shit. But it just opened up a whole doorway. Like it was just even more, you know. Um, Belching Beaver had collaborated with Deftones, one of my favorite bands, and uh, released an IPA called Phantom Bride. I figured I'd give that a try. And then that kind of basically opened up another doorway for IPAs, which I absolutely fucking love. But it's like, it's like a lot of what... PewDiePie said in the video, just about addiction in general. You replace one addiction with another. The problem was, yes, I, re I replaced it with something else that is way less bad for you, obviously, but it still didn't feel like I had beaten addiction, like I had just replaced it. Yeah, this is a key element of addiction. Like, oh, I, I can handle it, it's, it's, it's fine. Like, I know what I'm doing isn't good for me. Like, at, at this point in my life, even though I, I've gone through like maybe like weekly period to where I'm not like where I'm not drinking, it's still fairly often like oh, okay, let's see how many days I can do this time, or like oh I can like just drink every other day, and it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. 
usually when you talk about you know drinking and and addiction it's usually you know someone losing their job or losing their loved ones or their whole life getting ruined by it but i i was nowhere even near that so i i don't want it to seem like i'm trying to co-opt all that pain that people have you know but i i do also recognize it for what it was and you know also it's almost that romanticizes idea of a guy um, with a heavy heavy head or heavy heart over looking over at a bar with a with a glass you know it's almost seen as a as a cool thing this is also a really big part of it <laughs> i think it might be like i'm pretty sure it was like a demon on the stream or uh, uh no i think it was when uh, the amazing idiots was talking to watch talking about cigarettes and like when he quit cigarettes um just how often you see cigarettes in, in media. It might have been the Demon Mama conversation of uh, uh, Gay Fetcher, but I forget. Either way, like that, that point still remains. Like it's widely romanticized, just like weed. <laughs> like it looked cool, it felt nice uh, to, to smoke constantly. And I feel the same way now with alcohol. Like it's such a crutch. Like when I'm sitting here at my desktop playing a game, uh, it just feels right to have uh, a beer or like some sort of IPA or um, even like a glass of fucking uh, Jack Daniels Tennessee Fire mixed with some Bar Scott's beer. Just like some fucking really tasty shit that you just have no idea like what you're like how, how much alcohol it is and how much you're putting it into your system, you know? When it gets easy is when it gets hardest to quit. But the thing is, I've kind of, like, acknowledged the fact that this is, like, I am an alcoholic. I, I have been one for a few years now, maybe longer. The culture that we live in romanticizes drinking. Like, advertisements for beer everywhere. Like, fucking alcohol commercials. It's weird how our culture uh, basically, like, shapes what is and what isn't taboo. Like, cigarettes, like, they're bad. If you smoke, not not good. Uh, but we don't have that same attitude towards alcohol. And honestly, I don't think we should. Like, I, I believe in people's freedom to put whatever they want into their body. Like right now, I have a cup of coffee because it's another, I guess you can call addiction. Because it's every single morning I've got uh, a couple cups of coffee in me. Maybe, maybe more. Caffeine is a drug. See, this is what I struggle with too. Like... If I quit alcohol, what am I going to replace it with? Because the, the addiction aspect is there, like PewDiePie talks about throughout the video. Like I've tried like supplementing it with uh, with tea, and I, I, I like tea. I like, I like it a lot. I'll get different kinds and like I'll boil some water, have a cup of tea, but like at the same time, it's not like the same feeling. I like the feeling that alcohol gives me. I like the smoothness of like just perfectly crafted IPAs or a, a lager or, or what have you. And like at the same time, there's still so many that I haven't even tried yet. It's so easy, easy when everybody's trying to please me, baby. The problem is when you develop these habits to cope with your problems is that when you no longer have these issues, you still have to deal with the addiction like that just doesn't just go away uh, on its own. And I think I think Buddhism had it right all along. It's just I didn't do it correctly where it's they say that craving something is suffering and you will always suffer unless you uproot your cravings. And I, I needed to finally uproot those cravings and I did and that worked. I don't feel anything about alcohol or nicotine at this point because uh, they're completely cut out of my life. <laughs> So the reason why I'm, I'm making this video is like maybe you're addicted to something and you don't even realize it. I think day in and day out, us as human beings, part of this consumerist, materialist, capitalist society, are constantly looking for an escape. It's this root anxiety that we are always struggling with, that we're always uh, dealing with. Um, need some sort of stimulation, uh, some sort of out, some sort of escape, some sort of occupation for the time being. When we don't want to deal with our problems, we'll distract ourselves. We will uh, we'll get out of our minds with some sort of substance. And then we'll make excuses about it. And a clip earlier 
field expansions, how like, I mean, this isn't ruining my life. Like I've got a steady job. I'm a functioning alcoholic uh, as, as it were. Um, <laughs> so to speak, you know, but at the same time, that doesn't mean it's not affecting my health. Um, I've gained a lot of weight the past year. You know, it's an almost nightly thing where like maybe like have some hair of the dog and like maybe a couple drinks uh, the next night. Or maybe maybe there's one night a week where I, I'm just binging, basically. <laughs> like, it, it varies, but like, it, it's... I'm always going to be making excuses. So, fundamentally addressing those cravings, like whatever they may be, like, I want to eat junk. <laughs> or I want to drink a bunch of shit tonight. Or like, oh, I kind of want to stop by this corner store on the way home from work. Cause, uh, so that way I can, like, you know, just get a couple drinks and put them in the fridge. Just so that there's always drinks in my fridge. Or, you know, like, what would CBD do for me? You know? Let me just play one more clip from this video. But I'm hoping that talking about these things might lead people to open their eyes about their own actions and what they're, all, they're also doing. And it's a tough t thing to ad admit. Going through this experience, I am so humbled to people that deal with other forms of addiction because I didn't see it that way before. People that maybe deal with the, being overweight or um, I don't know, whatever drug addictions or whatever it could be. And, you know, obviously it's not the same, but I understand the mentality, which I didn't have an empathy for uh, the same way because I never questioned myself doing it because it's never been a problem on the outside. Yeah, that, that's an excellent point. Um... It doesn't have to be an addiction that affects other people. Um, you just gotta put yourself first. You've gotta, you've gotta focus on your well-being and your health. A lot of people lose sight of that. Like a lot of people just lose control of themselves, and in the process, they become some sort of slave to some sort of substance. And letting go of those substances might finally make you find yourself like what exactly is driving uh these issues and, and it could be hard you know like i know i know why i do it like i want an escape like i've got a lot of things to worry about like a lot of things that stress me out but then again like uh, sometimes I, I just do it to myself like i'm so occupied with you know media uh, and you know what's going on in the world and, and, and whatnot. I'm trying to keep my place of living together at the same time too, you know. And to top it all off, I I have ADHD, so it, it's that constant like I, I hyper focus on something, and I, I I need like some sort of stimulation. Like I have to be invested in something or just not at all. And with that comes unconsciously getting into these unhealthy routines that I'm just not sure how to not only quantify, but face directly. I don't know. I don't know why I'm making this like, maybe it's some sort of cry for help, but like, I, I know what's wrong, but like, in the end, it's going to, it, it needs to be me. It needs to be me that addresses and fixes these problems because they're mine and I'm the one that's dealing with them like it's not a, it's not affecting my living situation it's not affecting my job it's affecting my self-esteem and my personal health and if I want to feel better about myself and just have a much healthier and more stable mindset Doing away with these cravings, these crutches, is really the only way that, like, being happier with myself is even possible. So yeah, that's that's, that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. Um, this was all off the cuff. I hope I didn't really miss anything. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you can relate to this, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments and uh, give this video a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. And um, check out my other videos too. Like, I think you enjoy the work 
that I put into them. Um, I got more on the way. Um, I'll see you all very soon. Thank you.